If you have a doorbell, video camera, or any other kind of CCTV at your home, you could be fined £100,000 for breaking the law. Well, in theory, anyway, and if you read headlines such as this from The Express. No criticism, Express, but this is a little bit of an exaggeration, because this is highly unlikely to ever happen. Even according to the regulator themselves, the ICO, who say, quote, it is highly unlikely that the ICO will consider it fair or balanced to take enforcement action against a domestic CCTV user. So, in other words, that's just not likely to happen. Although I'm not really sure where the £100,000 came from either, because the maximum penalty that the ICO can impose for organisations is £17.5 million or 4% of the annual worldwide turnover in the preceding financial year. Although, as I say, they're unlikely to do anything against a domestic CCTV user. However, that's not the end of the matter. It really is, and that's why you watch my channel. So if you're new to me, I'm Daniel Shensmith, a barrister of England and Wales. Please do hit that subscribe button, because about 60 or 70% of you don't. 60 or 70% that watch my channel, out of the millions of you that I so gratefully thank for watching my channel every month, don't subscribe. Imagine how many subscribers I'd have if everybody subscribed. Please do that now. Thank you very much. Right, so if you want to use CCTV at your home or a doorbell camera or whatever, you have the right to do so. However, this is where the debate does really come in because you do have to comply with the law. A lot of people, particularly in the comments, now that I say it, the comments section will go crazy with people saying that this law doesn't apply to individuals at home. It very much does. And you have to comply with the law. As the defendant in the case of uh, Fairhurst and Woodard found out here, um, where he lost a case uh, for harassment and breach of data protection. And I'm not sure what the damages were. That wasn't reported. At least I couldn't find it. And costs, doubtless. So you do have to comply with the law. You can be sued if you break the law, but the ICO is not likely to get involved. So very broadly speaking, here are the guidelines that I would suggest if you're going to use cameras at your home. And as I say, lots of people argue with this in the comments, but they are what's known as wrong to adopt the phraseology of Dave Ramsey. Um, if they say that you're not breaking the law by filming someone outside of your property, they're wrong. You can be breaking the law. Now, you can only capture so much as is reasonably necessary. And if you're capturing people outside of the curtilage of your property, they are individually identifiable, then you have to comply with the principles and everything else within the data protection legislation. That being the Data Protection Act 2018 and the UK retained GDPR. So you have to capture only so much as is reasonably necessary. You have to store it securely. You only store it for as long as is necessary. Use it for the purpose for which it was captured in the first place, which for home CCTV, the only real arguable case is for security of your home. You can't be using it for any other purpose, really, because no other purpose, in my view, is going to be reasonable. For example, if you wanted to, e let's take a crazy example. You wanted an entertainment YouTube channel where you capture the private conversations of your neighbor using CCTV. You publish them online to provide entertainment to everybody else. Clearly that is wrong. Clearly that is illegal. Clearly they could sue you. They probably would sue you. If it was me, I would sue you. And they would win because that would be a breach of data protection. Now, the people in the comments that scream that this is uh, doesn't apply to individuals, can do that all they like. They will get sued as well if they do exactly the same thing because it does apply in those scenarios. And so you have to comply with the data protection legislation. But are you likely to be fined for doing that? No, but you could very well be sued, as I say. Um, the ICO does provide some very helpful guidance on what to do. Um, one of those things being that you should put up signs to make clear that you're recording and um, Again, only using so much as is necessary. If you have a dispute with somebody, you should approach the person, you should talk to them about it. But if all else uh, fails, the ICO is not really like to take, likely to take any further action. Um, the ICO does say here um, that there is a limited amount of action that they can take. They can send a letter. They often do send a letter. I've seen such letters where they send a letter out to say, you know, please, you know, stop recording this amount, stop filming outside of the curtilage, um, please, please put up appropriate, appropriate signage, respond to data protection uh, requests. 
Um, those requests being as an individual, if you are the neighbour, you can ask for a copy of any uh, video footage that's taken of you if you're walking past, for example. Um, and the, per the person running the CCTV, the domestic CCTV, must comply with that request and must provide a copy of that footage. Um, and it, so if they refuse, you can complain to the ICO. They will write and all of that will become evidence to then take a case to court if you need to. But as the ICO confirms themselves, they are not likely to get involved themselves. Uh, and so these fines that are reported in these headlines are just not likely to happen. Not to say it won't ever happen, but highly unlikely. Now, there might be some uh, extreme case where that does happen. Um, but there are other uh, considerations as well. For example, is the camera uh, concealed? Is it uh, recording audio? Because audio can be much more intrusive. You can probably uh, get away with having the camera overlooking part of a garden or part of your uh, neighbor's driveway and things like that, or the pathway in front of your house. If you are not using audio recording, uh, you're only storing it for a certain amount of time. It's only, say, motion activated and things like that uh, within a certain boundary. And so that you are protecting your area of your property without uh, infringing on the privacy of other people. And if you receive a request, you comply with that request. The best way to deal with all of this is to speak to your neighbour beforehand. Say, for both of our protection, I'm planning to put up CCTV that watches this fence uh, between our properties to see whether people are climbing over, trying to burgle the houses and so on. And then you can catch them in the act. It can be used as evidence, etc. If Obviously, if the neighbour uh, agrees, then it's perfectly fine. Even if they disagree, so long as you can justify it and you're prepared to justify that in court if necessary, then you can still use it. But... Uh, just know that if you are capturing more either video or certainly audio more than is reasonably necessary, then your neighbour might well sue you, as was the case with the uh, Fairhurst and Woodard judgment. Now, there were lots of cameras involved, and so the number and the position and the amount of footage that these cameras record all becomes relevant. So if you do see these headlines, uh, there's no need to outright panic and go and uninstall your camera, but you do need to comply with the law. And it is a warning that if you do just capture everything, particularly as I've had some really bizarre emails, um, but I feel the need to talk about them because people are ge genuinely confused and are genuinely having these problems. Some people have said that they've got a neighbour with a CCTV camera pointed at their child's bedroom. And that, you don't need a lawyer to tell you that that is wrong. It is a breach of the data protection legislation. And if people are in that position and they do have someone pointing the camera at their child's bedroom, then they absolutely need to take legal action about that. There, I'm sure there are plenty of lawyers that would do that on a no-win, no-fee basis uh, because that is a very straightforward case of uh, either taking it to court if necessary or and getting the result and getting them to take the camera down. So very bizarre emails that I get. I feel the need to address them because it's it's not just once I've had an email like that. I've had a number of emails or comments. I've had a number of emails and comments about things like that where some someone, a neighbor, is filming the garden where the children play or filming the bedroom, the child's bedroom, all sorts of strange things. Now, this is very slightly removed from just capturing a slither of a pathway or a slither of a driveway or the fence overlooking the length of the fence so you can just about see over the side. But then you have to be careful, as I say, not to capture audio because if the neighbours are sitting in the garden next to the fence and your camera's picking up all the conversation, that can all be private conversation. Well, it's, well, it's private regardless of the contents of that conversation. It is private because it's within their own private dwelling. There is a quite obviously a reasonable expectation of privacy in your own garden or your front garden for that matter. So make sure that what you capture is reasonable. It's only used for the purposes that you originally capture it for. You do comply with requests if they ask for a copy of it. You put up signs to warn people that it's uh, filming. If the camera is obvious and you can see it like a ring doorbell on the front of your house, it's not quite so necessary, but it's still better that you have a sign to say that it's recording. 
And also look at the settings of your cameras as well, because you can limit the area that it records, you can limit how long it stores it for. And for example, I have cameras all around my house, but I have uh, restrictions on certain areas so it doesn't capture my neighbor's areas when they come and go. Uh, so if you need to go into the settings and change all of those things, it will help you to comply with the law in the event that you ever get sued. Because then you can show, well, look, here's the camera, uh, here's what it captures, but I've blanked that part out. So it doesn't capture that area. It's not motion activated when they go in that area. It doesn't pick up audio and so on. So I hope that's useful, but I've had a lot of uh, questions and comments over previous videos, and I see headlines like this. There was another major news outlet, um, is all I'll say, that had a very similar headline. And when I saw it, I thought, wow, um, I'm surprised that that news outlet has used that headline because um, that's just a little bit exaggerated and not realistic. Um, but I couldn't find it afterwards, so I think they've taken it down. I think they've had someone look at it, uh, maybe someone's contacted them and said, you know, this is not quite right. This is a bit of an exaggeration. So, um, yes, it is a little bit clickbait, um, but that's the internet. That's how it works. If you find this useful, please do subscribe. That helps me grow. It's the one metric that I can understand that I'm reaching a wider audience. I'm very grateful for that. So thank you very much. Have a great Saturday. See you in the next one.